You are listening to the Gritty Podcast, where we talk about all things gritty. Welcome to the Gritty Podcast. I'm Brian Call. Brad Hunt is here beside me. We're on the road driving to Boise for a Bear Tour event. And another question that came out, up out, at the last Bear Tour we were in in Missoula. We got the question quite a bit, not just in the Q&A session, but just... Yeah, people pulling us to the side to, yeah. like, when we were doing gear stuff. And we got asked many times kind of the same question. Yeah. Anyway. How do I stay on the mountain? How do I not quit? Yeah. How do I develop more mental toughness? How do I, how do I stay? Yeah. And, um, it came up over and over again, which I think at this stage in the game for us, I mean, I'm almost 50. You've been doing, uh, you've been doing this for a long time too, Brad, even though yeah. you're only a, a young 35 year old. 35. Hey, come on. I'll be 36. No, <laughs> I got a long time for I'm 36. So, <laughs> so I think we take it for granted. We do. We just do. Yeah. So there's so much to cover on this topic, but <clears throat> I think what we want to do today, when a guy says, how do I stay out there longer? How do I, how, how how do I not go home, quit? Especially guys that hunt solo. Yeah. They're like, man, I, I last and I, and then, you know, and then I, then I call it quits. So there's some very practical things that you can do right out, right out the gate that can help, help you stay in the mountains longer. And then there's some more deeper philosophical, I think, <laughs> like foundational things. Yes. About your core as a person that that also uh need to be in place right so um you know there's no doubt that what we do has a degree of mental toughness you know woven into it it's it it is uh succeeding despite the odds you know there's 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 physical suffering discomfort right uh deprivation you, you know you're not able to just take a hot bath and and eat a big dinner you know cold you're a uh, wet you're fast food you don't have a fast food restaurant up there whatever you're right <laughs> whatever your little crutches may be and so you know anyway it's it's not the easiest thing to do to stay out there on the mountain yeah. so some basic things that you can do um some real simple things right off the bat uh, a lot of times guys are talking themselves into going home because they're worried about their family. Yeah. Now, I think that's m usually mostly in your head. It's not a reality. They're fine. They can go without you for seven days, 10 days, 15 days, and the world won't end. In fact, it's probably good for them. But yep. um, you talk yourself into going home because you miss them. You're worried about them. Well, with today's technology... You run an inReach, a Garmin inReach device. Yep, communication. And you can text your family and stay in contact at all times. I think that's a big one that'll let you know you can rest at ease. You know, there's no emergencies at home. You I mean, know, I mean, even Lamper's like, he can have his whole house flooding or the pipes are breaking. Yeah. And he's like, ah, Hillary's got it. <laughs> Hillary's fine. She'll be fine. <laughs> he does. Like, I don't know. Being in communication, you know, you can, and, in turn, your your wife, your family, they may be concerned about you too. But through that communication, you know, you can put each other at ease because yeah. you have that that ability to talk and say, "Hey, I'm okay. I'm gonna stay out here another few days. I'm gonna keep pushing." And your your better half may be the one that says, "Nope, don't come home. Keep going. Don't don't quit until well, you get it done." If if your better half uh, is the opposite, is like, "Yeah, come home." You got to be careful about those you, text you have messages. To be, you, have, you have to be um, careful. You're going to need it. another source of uh, toughness when it comes to <laughs> to to that. Right. But definitely, um, being able to stay in touch has really made life a lot easier. Think back to 20 years ago, 10 years ago, even yeah, when you were just out there, no service, no connection, and you're just 
you know, and, and then you decide I'm not going to stay out here just 10 days. I'm going to, I'm going to extend the trip another five or six. And you know, these things, they start to worry about you. Where are you? So yeah. the in reach device, satellite communication, staying in touch with loved ones that helps quite a bit. So you can stay on the mountain longer. Mm-hmm. Another thing that helps you stay on the mountain longer is a stellar shelter. Yes. Staying warm, hot tent, and dry is it. It can it can it's a it's a it's a uh, well it's just a it's game a game changer. changer. <laughs> we we've been known to say that a lot, but it really is. I mean, because it it takes away a fear that you may have of you know a snowstorm's coming in or I'm gonna get soaking wet. Hey, if you like our show and you want to support us. Head over to Peaks Equipment and check out what they have. Use the code GRITTY over there and you will save. They've got the trekking poles. They've got their brand new sleeping bag that they just dropped. Peaks has a teepee. They have gaiters. They have a headlamp. All premium products for the outdoorsmen. Head over there. Use the code GRITTY. That's peaksequipment.com. Now let's get back to the show. How am I going to dry out? Uh, and comfortability. Or you just got soaked. And- yeah. Yep. If you have no way to dry out your boots, you fell in the water, whatever, and your clothes are soaked and you're freezing. Yes. When you have a hot tent, it's like going back to your trailer or going back to your house that has a furnace. Exactly. I mean, you literally climb inside, strip down to your uh, skivvies, throw your, uh, get that fire cranking. You're in like a, you know, an, a, a, a sauna. And it, you can just let that heat well, dry like out the, all your stuff. The top of the teepee is just like a dryer for your boots. Now, you obviously, you want to be careful if you have a full grain leather boot. You got to be careful of that. We're, we're, we're mostly running synthetics almost 90% of the time. Until Unless cold it's weather. super late season. Yep. Cold then, weather, uh, with full, full leather grain. But, you know, you got a synthetic boot. Pop it in the top with a crack saw boot dryer. And it's like yep. warm feet in the clothes, dry clothes. In the Peaks teepee, which we love, you could. That's why we wanted it designed this way. You got the trekker trekking poles that go cross member across the top of the yep. teepee. We've hung fifty pounds from that. It's like rafters up there in the top yes. of your teepee, and you can just hang clothes, rain gear, socks, boots, everything up in the canopy of the teepee. Gives you still room to maneuver down below, but all that heat is also going up there into the top of the teepee and you're drying out your boots and all that. Yeah. Just being able to get your body temperature back up comfortable. It's just a, it's a major, major winning strategy. Uh, When in the past, you know, one of the hardest thing is a guy's wet and cold and miserable day after day. And the body begins to break down fast. Yeah. It's hard to get, to get the, to get rejuvenated, to go back out. So don't set yourself up for failure by by not having a hot tent and freezing yourself out yep. or getting wet and turning back and quitting. And I would say be able to thrive. Thrive, exactly. And to be able to, you know, and that includes your gear, having puffy jackets where you're not packing a bunch of weight, uh, maybe some rain gear depending on the hunt you're on, but just, just having the necessary tools that are not going to, you know, they're going to keep you in the field. They're not going to prevent, or they are going to prevent failure. Yeah. I was getting at. So in reach hot tent. Yep. The, another one is, um, especially if you're solo, at least for myself, but even, even when I'm with some buddies, audio books, yes. Uh, podcasts, movies, you know, some things to entertain you to keep your mind uh, occupied yep. when things get monotonous. You know, pick uh, a book you want to learn from or a, a a good book you've been meaning to read, like something Jack yep. Carr wrote. You got Goggins yelling in your ear, telling you you could be in a, a sissy and stuff. Yeah. They yeah. kind of keep you going on the mountain, I guess. I don't know. I find, uh, you know, there's some of the best books I've ever read. I mean, and I say read, but listen to <laughs> through my audiobooks app, you know, I've been able to 
read uh, some wonderful books where I'm just, my mind is clear. I'm up there in the mountains. I'm by myself. And I have day after day, I can, I'm sitting in glass and for six, eight hours straight. Well, during that time, I can learn some new skills or get a new perspective on life or understand more about business or understand more about hunting. And it, it informs me. I'm, it helps me uh, develop new ideas, grow. It's, and it's, it just, it's just big. And yeah. then movies, just, just to be able to sit back after you're alone, freezing to death, and then watch something you've never seen before that makes you laugh. Yeah, I was gonna say gets you stoked. Watching a comedy movie, it, it kind of you know lightens your mood, even if you're especially if you're solo, like lightens your mood, kind of takes your mind off of things. Um, and just again, I think the big thing is taking your mind off of things because if you're watching a movie you're not worried about what's going on at home or whatever for me anyway. Yeah. Uh, especially a, a movie that you're laughing. Now you could, you know, you could take that the other way and watch a, a movie that <clears throat> want, you know, is, is like, <laughs> yeah, no, but a film can reset you yes. and uh, kind of make you laugh. Take your mind I mean, off. Bri- Brian's watching real, pitch perfect all the time. A real <laughs> lousy day. You can just feel a lot better. Yeah. Pedro and I watched that. It was hilarious. It's funny. Um, a lot of Adam Sandler movies. Yep. Yeah, for sure. So movies are, are um, I don't know, they've really helped in audiobooks and so on. Music yes, helps. And so if you're going to do that, though, you better have a good uh, solar panel. <laughs> it's true. And uh, battery pack. We, we, we have been using various ones throughout the years, but nowadays the three-panel solar panels are working really well. Yeah. There's a few brands out there you can check out, but they're... They're very, very good. Yep. Um, about because before we, you might have a movie. You're like, I can't watch a movie. No. I, I don't have enough battery power nope. to last ten days up Especially here. Especially if you got to use your map a lot or you're using your phone to navigate. You, yep. You burn yep. some power quickly, and so then that kept you from watching movies or the same thing with your your in reach. Yeah. You would uh, try to manage battery life yep. in the past, so. You wouldn't have it on all the time. You you send might, a quick message. Yeah, turn like it back on. now we can turn it on in the morning, leave it on all day. And if yeah. our wives or somebody wants to get a hold of us that has the, our in reach contact, they can just hit us up. There's that peace of mind knowing there's this continual contact. Yeah. In the past, we didn't get to do that. No. But yes, now with the solar panels and battery packs, that helps a lot. Okay. So that's another one that really helps you stay on the mountain and in the field um, when things are getting yeah. tough. I know you hear it a lot. Um, it gets pushed a lot, but I do believe in it. It's like, I never want to come off the mountain because I wasn't physically fit enough. Um, you know, again, it gets hammered a lot. You need to be in shape for this. And I think that, yeah, it's true. Um, but I also know some guys that are not that fit, but their mental toughness is through the roof. And so they get it done on a hunt. But again, I just, yeah, being want- in shape, you know, Ryan talked about that in, yep. in, at the last event, he's like, man, I can't emphasize enough that being in good health and being strong and being in shape yeah, is, is major. It, it, when thing, instead of you being broken and, and busted on day three and so sore, you just want to quit, you know, or you just don't want to climb after that, that critter up there that you've been dreaming about, you know this hunt for a year, but because you're not adequately fit enough, you know, you're like, you, you, you miss opportunity after opportunity. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. Your fitness, um, is a great way to help you be successful and stay on the mountain. But as Brad said, all of these things are sort of these tactics, little, little, uh, I guess material things that you can do to help yourself stay on the mountain. But we know guys that have all those things. It's true. And still quit and go home. Yeah. So there's, there's a deeper thing going on here that net that you need to, that needs to be developed. And, you know, and I truly think that it's, 
you can develop a higher level of mental toughness. I Years ago, I heard Jocko Willink on a Tim Ferriss podcast, and he was reading from an article somewhere. I don't remember where the article was from, like some article that was written that basically said that mental uh, or discipline is finite. So, you know, we all have our willpower is finite. So he's like, yeah, your willpower, uh, you have a little bit of it. And then uh, if you use too much of it, it disappears. And then you have none left. Uh, it, Jocko's reading the article. and He's like, yeah, this is pretty much bullshit. <laughs> like, nothing about this is actually, he's like in, you know, he's famous for saying discipline equals freedom. Mm-hmm. Uh, he talks a lot about discipline, developing greater levels of discipline. Yeah. Discipline begets more discipline. That's how it works. Yeah. It's like a muscle that you exercise. You, you work on things incrementally where you get, you know, discipline is something you earn over a lifetime. Yeah. It's a long process. It's not just something that happens overnight. <clears throat> and it's a perishable thing. Yeah. It's a, it, just because you had discipline five years ago doesn't mean you have it now. Mm-hmm. Although I do believe that the carryover factor is substantial. I mean, once you've developed discipline, willpower, mental toughness, yeah, it's it's generally there. That's why someone like Livesey after 12 Ironman races, uh-huh. even being out of shape and all of that and older than us and all, and it doesn't matter. He's going to put his mental toughness yeah, to work yep. and get through stuff where when he was younger um, running those races, he developed it and in other aspects of his life as well. So if you sit there and you're like, man, well, I want more toughness. I want more willpower. I really think it works like this and kind of how I've done it in my life. First of all, I think about the why. Uh, I was telling Brad earlier about this quote, Yep, this quote by Nietzsche. And it's he who has a why. He who has a why to live can bear almost any how. He who has a why to live can bear almost any how. Now, I think it's similar like, if you have a why mm-hmm. for for being on the mountain, yeah, you have a why for what what you're doing out there. Well, you hear people say it for like your job or whatever you know, your passion. They always say, "Find your why," mm-hmm. and I I really believe in that because if if you don't have a purpose for doing whatever it is you're doing, that why you're not going to be driven. It's easy to quit. It's easy to quit. Like you got to understand. Why are you there? Yeah. Why are you on that mountain? Yep. Because that's the first question that comes to your mind. When the day has sucked, you missed a bull elk with your bow, despite working your butt off. Yeah. You're wet. You're cold. Here you are in that moment. And you're like, you got five days left in this, in the hunt, but you've been out there like 10 days and you're like, why, why am I doing this to myself? Mm-hmm. Why am I here? Why? Why am I not at home with the family I miss? Why am I wasting my time? Like all these thoughts creep into your head. Yeah. And they become, they become, that question becomes the main question often. Yep. If you already have it figured out, then you've already put those questions that may come up. You've already put them to bed. Like it shouldn't be an issue. So you, you've got to ask yourself that why. So Brad, in your mind, like, you know, I think you and I probably Ryan too. We often take that for granted. Yeah. So I'm going to challenge you here. Like what is the why for you that keeps you out there working at it? Um, or some of the why, like yeah. there's more than one reason. I mean, there's right? a lot of reasons, lots of motivations. Yeah. But I mean, one, like, look what we get to do for a living, you yeah. know, and, and I've, as I've chosen this path to make it a living. And so it's hard for me to quit because if I don't, if we don't succeed, we don't get the, you know, say film the content, film. 
than the experience, the knowledge. We don't, I don't, we make, don't eat. I don't make the money. I don't eat. <laughs> I, like, my family doesn't eat, you know? And so, um, and I, and I can't help others, you know, find, find their it's like passion an athlete, for the though, outdoors. Like, like an athlete is the same. If they don't perform, they don't get paid. Right. Exactly. You know, you know professional I, athlete. We have been, you know, food has always been, especially since I've been doing this a lot more and I'm, I'm young, but food has become a priority. What I'm putting into my body, how I'm training my body has kind of become a much higher priority than I had 10 years ago. And, you know, as we're doing this carnivore diet, you know, I've been like really making sure I'm disciplined on what I'm eating. And so my why in that field is, again, it comes down to, I want to do what I love, but I also have a purpose to make an income to support my family. Uh, and if we don't get it done, I don't get it done. I, I, I can't support the the family. Uh, I can't support. You've, you've a given business. me one. You've given me one, and it's okay. financial. Yep. W- I, what? what uh, I'm looking for more. I'm digging deeper. Okay, deeper. Yeah. <sighs> because the text I got this week was Brad Hunt has officially started his diet <laughs> protocol. We want to go into that. Yes, yeah. I sent a text well, message out to you did. Uh, Livesey Lampers and Mister Call over here, and I said, "Boys, because you were afraid you're going to get beat." That's what it is. I can't get beat. These guys are old. So I said, I said, boys, and I, I've done some research, and that's why it's taken me ninety days since Ryan started his, sixty days since you started yours. I've been doing research for myself. Let's take the carnivore diet, mm-hmm. for example. I wanted to find out, you know, what the if the diet made you feel younger, correct, less sore, yes. Fitter. I want to do my own research of why cognitively it's going to benefit me. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. And I've seen the the brain fog with Brian has gone away. I see it with Lampers. Uh, you know, our the physical ability, and I hear Lampers talking about he's never sore anymore. So I'm like, mm, interesting. So I've disciplined myself to one year mm-hmm. of doing the carnivore diet uh, and making sure that. So I, I, I'm teasing out a couple of motivations yes. in there. Yes. One is your ego. It's true. And I I can't let it's these competition. old guys. You it's don't want to get beat correct, by correct. your peers. And I think competition drives many people. And if it doesn't, then something's wrong. <laughs> I mean, certainly it drove Kobe Bryant. It, Absolutely. It drove uh, so, Michael Jordan. It I drove think- some some of the greatest people. Yes, and I think Athletes there there always seen. has to be baby steps. There has to be, but there's there, that's not the only one. It's not just ego. No, no, it's not. What, what else is it? I think just to to succeed in life, um, with my kids, like I want to be there for my kids to, you know, whether it's playing basketball, hiking. Like I don't want to be the one that inhibits them from going and doing. So something. one is selfish in a sense. You just uh, don't want to get beat. Yeah, and, and you're looking for a chance for adoration from others and maybe to rub it in when you win a little gloating. So, and okay. then the other side is more altruistic. I want to do it for the people I love. Correct. And Correct. and I want to be healthier for my family, for my kids, for, yes. for my wife. And I will say last night, my brothers last night, the uh, side of competition and want to win really came out when I got invited to go play some basketball on these bad a high school boys show up and I'm like 35, they're 16, 17. I'm like, all right, let's show these boys how to play some ball. And by the end of the night, they were like, dang, you are in shape. You're, you're like, you're crushing us. I mean, you're, they're playing with a grown man. They're playing with a grown man. So, and we just had to. <laughs> but make you're sure not they, slow. We just had to make sure they knew that. <laughs> <laughs> so I think there's a lot of it. But again, just just I've found that if you have that discipline, um, whatever it is, and you have that why, yeah, and you figure out what that why is, then the how to get there is is maybe the word's not easy but it is easier look we we kind of discussed a minute ago like um you know look people have been using using uh you know competition mm-hmm. and ego for for eons yeah to to drive them i don't think it's not necessarily often the most healthy thing but balanced with other 
drivers, I, th- I think it's essential actually, yeah. because some of the things that have pushed me to be the most successful is when someone told me I couldn't do something. Right. Or when someone told me I, I sucked at something or someone's told me that they could beat me at something. When, when those things happen, it lights a fire in me. Yeah. I don't, don't, I don't know why, but I, it's not the same for everyone. It probably comes, you know, on a scale, but I get pissed off and, uh, and it motivates me. Yeah. And if you look at like, you know, you and I are big fans of the documentary with Michael Jordan. Yeah, the last dance. The last dance. And, and in that documentary, they talk about what was it, Broussard? Uh yeah. And he was like I, I don't remember the guy's name. I think it was Broussard. He, it, it, there there was a dude that Michael Jordan was playing against, and the guy had a game of all nights. All night. Yeah. And after the game was over oh, he, and he whooped Jordan, Jordan didn't have a very good game. And he said, night. good game, Mike. And Michael Jordan said, the guy came out and said, good game, Mike, yep. after the game was over. Yep. For the next game oh, yeah. comes it was, up. It was LeBradford Smith. LeBradford That's right. Smith. Yep. The next game, okay, they go out and Michael Jordan crushes him. Yeah, he says, I'm going to have what he had that night in the first half. And points wise, <laughs> right? And it was a it was an absolute uh, beating. Yes. And uh, Le, was it Bradford? Le Bradford Smith. He, he didn't have a good game at all. No. It was just it was an embarrassing. Uh, um, like Michael humiliated him. Yep. Okay. You know, fast forward. Turns out, Le Bradford Smith never said that to Michael Jordan. Yeah, right. He admitted it years later. He just sort of made it up in his own head. That's, he just had to make something up in his head, and in turn, that would drive him to go be the best that he could be. <laughs> like, that is, that is that mental. Is, <laughs> I don't know what you call it. You even a mental illness. I don't know. Yeah, but I I'm sure if we dissected that, there's some <laughs> unhealthy behavior in that. Right. But it's an extreme example of of this situation where you're. You're finding a why, yeah, a motivation, and I think that there, there there's hierarchies in that, right? Uh, to get revenge probably isn't the best why. No, to to make a difference in the world probably a more a more uh, a better why. But I th- I think the truth is because we're human beings, the why is a combination of a number of things. Yeah. And part of that is, yeah, I I basically want to beat you. I want to beat Ryan. I want to beat Mark. I want to beat my other peers. Like, I've always had, you know, felt a drive to yeah. for to be competitive. I I want to, I want to compete. Well, and I think that probably I know I know it did for me, um, but you know when you're on team sports and you're and you start from a young age, having that instilled in your life. I mean, I, I do think it makes you a better person. I mean, I think I, competition always makes it for better. Take a business. Well, certainly, wise. you know, you have a business that's the only one selling this product. Then they kind of have the market share. They have the, they, uh, they don't, they don't innovate and grow where if you have somebody else comes in the scene and has, you know, brings on the competition. And I think both companies yeah. become better. Yeah. Yeah. I think competition does, make everything better. That's why yes. I like capitalism too. Yeah. Free right, markets. Exactly. I think for me, you know, when I think of the why, when I'm on a mountain, yeah, it is partly, um, it's a combination of a lot of different drivers. Yeah. One is if I don't perform, I don't eat. Yeah. So that that's a big driver. Not just, it's not, I'm not there by the way, simply to succeed on a hunt. I'm there to capture the story. Exactly. And I would say your why well. Your why depends because, you know, I go on some hunts that I don't even have a tag on. And so my why is like, I'm there to create and to be able to tell this story later on. Yeah. You know, and my why is I want to make the best. Like with Jeremiah's hunt. Yeah. I want to make the best film that I can. Correct. In that moment. And my why is also because I want, I want my kids or someone I care about to be, to see to see a successful 
hard to do journey yeah playing out right. to show to show them uh to give them something to inspire them and i think that um there so my motivations my why's they vary yes uh i want um i want what i do to make a difference yep that means i got to capture the thing or do the thing that is hard to do. Yeah. We talk about that a lot, you know, in order to, to inspire people or whatever it may be, you have to go do the thing. You have to go do the hard thing, the, the inspiring thing, you know, and for us, that's going on some pretty hard, inspiring hunts, grueling, grueling hunts. I mean, heavy backpacks and, and, uh, again, inspiring is always, I think one of the top things for me too is because we have a lot of people I have obviously uh, as of late, um, a lot of people that have come up to me and they're like, dude, you know, you guys doing this and they figure out the backpack weights and they're like, you're, in, you've inspired me to go out and do a solo bear hunt. You inspired me to do this yeah. and that. Uh, and again, I want to do the same thing for my kids. I want to inspire my kids to, to have a passion yeah. for this and to go love it and, and, yeah, Grind. I think that, you know, when I was in high school, I I really loved playing sports mm-hmm. and I loved basketball, especially for some reason. Um, I, I loved the game and uh, I, I was always pretty quick and, uh, you know, I could jump and, you know, all that. And I like the physicality of it yep. and uh, the speed. It's good with my hands. So I liked the game and I played quite a bit. And uh, I tried out for the basketball team. I I had never done any team sports. I was a country kid who spent time riding horses and catching crawdads and stuff. So here I am. I'm like, I think I was, I was a freshman and I went and I, I, I was like, I want to play high school sports. Well, by then all the kids that were there had been playing since, Right. Elementary school and through junior high. So I'm way behind the game. I show up, but I, I mean, I, I could play. I mean, I had physical ability, but I just didn't. I had a lifetime of not doing it. And I remember uh, going in to, to play. I tried out and I didn't make it. And in the course of that as well, some, quite a few of the dudes made fun of me for not for not being very good and not making it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, dude, I haven't done this before. I mean, I played games with buddies at the gym, at the church and stuff like that, but I didn't, I didn't play play. And, uh, they pissed me off. They pissed me off. (laughs) Uh, Uh. said I couldn't do it. You know, all that kind of stuff. So I went and found, with the help of my parents, a coach who would teach me how to be a better basketball player. And the moment I didn't make the team, I met with that guy every day for that full year. Right. He said, uh, you, you're, you're the three B's, you know, this is between my, my freshman year of high school and my sophomore year of high school bed. Uh, he said, bed books and basketball. That's your life. If I'm going to teach you, that's it. His name is Van Horn. He's like, that's it. And he was an ex uh, college uh, basketball player, played in the same high school area, was an assistant coach. And uh, my parents coughed up a little cash to to pay for the one on one, and he worked my butt off. <laughs> and he thought I quit. I didn't. I showed up every day. I put in the hours. People made fun of me. They still made fun of me. What are you doing? You'll never make it. Fast forward to the tryouts the next year, my sophomore year. And dang it, I just, I never grew either. So I was already small to begin with. Um, And uh, so I get there and I tried out and I made the team my sophomore year of high school. So the same guys that had been the worst the year before, they got cut. And I was better than them by quite a margin. They were 
they were pissed. And then as the years went on, I got better because the, the foundation that I laid with that coach one on one, I just built on that. Yeah. And became a far more skilled player. He taught me so many things and I had the discipline to put in the work and a basic level of athleticism that I could, you know, work into it. And then junior year, senior year became quite good and uh, could play at the highest, highest high school levels of games. And, uh, but the driver there, I mean, I wanted to go out and I wanted to play. I wanted the team sport. I, I wanted the camaraderie, the brotherhood. I wanted to see what it was like. But it was the ridicule that lit the fire. Right. Yeah. It, it was the, 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 uh, you know, it was the adversity yep. that pissed me off and that every day made it pretty easy for me to sacrifice everything else yeah. and work. And I'm wired that way. I think most people are, you know, actually. And, uh, you know, I, and I don't know how to explain it either because, you know, we started doing the, I, I'm pushing my wife gently to. You and I both, my to friend. maybe, you, you know, embrace both. this meat only yeah. carnivore diet yep. just to try it with me. Right. But, you know, she's like, she doesn't, you know, she's not so sure. Yeah. And I don't, I don't, I don't blame her. So I'm doing it and she's seeing, she's seeing the results mm -hmm. and she's she, visibly and also, you know, cognitively and otherwise she, she's just seeing it all. And I'm, and I like it. And anyway, we got into this a little argument because, you know, I was pushing maybe a little too hard. And she's, she said something like, well, Brian, you know, look, I don't, I'm not ready. I don't, I don't want to just do that. And I can't just do it. And, you know, yep. from my respect, I'm not, I, I'm just saying, do it. She says, not everybody just decides one day, okay, now I'm only going to get eat, eat meat and then just does it. She's like, people say I'm going to do it and then they fail and they do this and they do that. And then they, and they try again. And yes. She, she says, you know, and, and from my perspective, I'm like, no, I just said I'm going to do it. And then I did it from then on. Yeah. Same here. Same here. And I, my why though is because I'm a father and a husband, I need to be strong and alert and capable to provide, right. to protect to serve my family. I'm I'm competitive. I want to compete with my peers. I want to age well. I have all these other drivers too. And so I don't know. For me, once I'm like, nope, I see the reasoning behind this. I see the benefits behind it. And no amount of, you know, ice cream enjoyment exactly is going to circumvent the overall goal that has a strong why behind it. It it just doesn't. No. And so it's like, it's not hard. I just say, nope, not, I'm not interested in that, uh, that pile of French fries. Just yeah. not. It's funny because, so I've only been on it, I don't know, a week, an hour or so back and forth. And, and I had done this like in 2018, pretty much the carnivore diet, but I had some supplementation of like, a sweet potato for some energy. I was playing a lot of ball and stuff and lifting, but now I'm like, Nope, I'm in it one year and then I will start supplementing back in stuff to see how it affects my diet or whatever. But the other day we got back from the bear tour and my wife had made my absolute favorite cookies, oatmeal, chocolate chip. I sit on the counter and I'm like, Nope, I'm not even touching them. I'm like boys can have them, whatever. And so I, I just think, you know, maybe a few years ago, that wouldn't have been that easy. I'd, I'd mm -hmm. have slipped, you know, grabbed a cookie or whatever. But I think always doing some hard things like our hunts, our backpacking with super heavy loads, um, <laughs> even the basic stuff of making your bed. Yeah. You know, those are little steps that. Yeah, we, we, I'm going to interrupt you just for no, a minute. No, yeah, exactly. I, I think you're getting at a, a, something I was saying earlier, which is. 
uh, discipline is earned incrementally over a long period of time. Right. So it's not like I just woke up yesterday and had discipline all of a sudden and I'm like, nope, just, just, just carnivore diet for me. No, it's been a long process of building step, stepping stones to get to where you're at today. It's, it's my life, mm-hmm. right? Like back to when I was so pissed off about not making the team and then committing to earn my way yep. uh, on the team the next year. Like it's, it starts out early in life. And if you don't have a lot of discipline now, you can still get there. Yes. You can start where you are. And even if you have, like we talked about earlier, you and I just on our, on our own, you could have a lot of discipline and in five years you lose it all. Yeah. Like it's a continual process of mind games and working and being held accountable and pushing yourself. You know, you can, again, you can and, lose it just as fast as you, you built it up. And I say this, you know, when I've worked with people who didn't have a lot of mental discipline, who would come to the CrossFit gym and they would quit not push themselves, be too weak Mm -hmm. because their bodies were more than capable. It was their mental will. Their will was not there. One thing I don't think, you know, they had to work on their why, why, why does it matter? Why, why do, why do, why should I push myself? Right. Yeah. So, so when you work on that and understanding that and you articulate it, document it in your mind and print it on your brain, why? Find out all the reasons why. Explore all the reasons. And then when something comes up to circumvent the success mm-hmm. or of what it is you're trying to do, like Nietzsche said, you can endure almost I- anything. Yeah, any why You can overcome it. Yeah. You can overcome the trial, the struggle if you have a reason. Get the reason. Understand the reason. And anchor yourself to that. Yeah. The other thing is, Bit dis- discipline begets more discipline. So yes, exactly. When you're like, man, I really want to go from now on. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna exercise every day for 2024. Done. But you've never done that before. You're not gonna do it. No. You're not gonna succeed. No. You start with things that you will absolutely do and can do, and you build on that first. So. One of the things that they'll, you know, like Jordan Peterson will talk about this. He'll say, make your bed. Yep. Right. Every day, get up, make your bed. Start there. There was was a book, book written on that. And I, you know, read it like four or five, six years ago, something like that. I don't remember who it was. Some, I think Peterson says, clean your room, clean your room. And then there was, but the other one is make your bed. Make your bed. And so basically it's just telling you those small, it's an ex military. Yes. And those small stepping stones are like, okay, right off the bat, I made my bed. Win number one for the day, done. Yep. And so the next one is whatever it may be. I'm going to, I'm going to eat a healthy breakfast every morning. I'm going to eat some eggs every morning, whatever. Right. Done. Checking those off throughout the day to progress you into those bigger, uh, it's, uh, it's amazing because disciplines that you have somehow, once you have got yourself, you're making your bed every day and you haven't missed a day Mm -hmm. for 90 days, you know, you're like, well, I don't, I don't want to not do it today because I, I've built this, Yeah, I, I'm doing it, yes. right? And there's yep. something infectious about it, something that is, that um, it just feels right. And yep. and then you get more and more dedicated to discipline as a result. It, it just builds on itself. So the next thing is, you know, hey, not just make my bed, but clean my room yeah. every day. And then it's, okay, you know, the next thing is, okay, go for a walk every day. Just just five minutes yep. or ten minute walk up the road and back, right like every day, and that's what I mean by discipline is earned. It's incremental like that. When you become com- able to fulfill your commitments to yourself, because you have a powerful why. Yeah. Maybe you want to lose a hundred pounds because you got a family to take care of and kids to raise, and you've neglected your health for a long time. Hey, if you like our show and you want to support us, you can head over to one of our partners, which is Canvas Cutter. They sell these awesome bed rolls that we've been using for years. You can just throw these suckers out on the ground, camp in them. You see, I got my sleeping bag inside. Can't recommend them enough. They also have duffel bags, some of the best 
you've seen canvas duffel bags. They've got bean bag chairs as well. They call them the dirt bag. They got wall tents. Head on over there, use the code GRITTY. Check it out. Cannot recommend the bedrolls enough. Let's get back to the show. You decide, I have a powerful why. This is meaningful. Then you start with incremental levels of discipline that you know you can achieve. Yes. And once you've mastered that, you move up to the next one. It's a, it's a, it's a incremental process over a long period of time. And fast forward a year, two years, and 10 years, and 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, and pretty soon you become an extremely resilient yeah. and disciplined person, hyper successful in most areas of your life. But it doesn't happen overnight. That's why when someone says, how do I stop from quitting? When I'm on the mountain and things get hard and I want to go home and I'm on a solo hunt. Baby steps. There's there's tactics like we discussed at the very outset of the podcast yeah. that you can help you with, help you do it. And But most of that is something that got developed for us o- over decades. Yes, right. Exactly. And... And uh, that's how it works. You know, I remember um, the other thing I think that's really important, like going back to fleshing out your motivation and your why, your reason for doing things, reason for losing 100 pounds, reason for, you know, tightening up your diet or exercising more. You find that reason and you you define it and you cling to it and and you hold on to that reason. And when things come up to circumvent that why, you can, you can, you can avoid those obstacles. Right. Um, but I, I think that, you know, how you talk to yourself is absolutely, um, critical oh, like uh, for, for everything in life. Yes. I had, it's funny cause I had this conversation with my oldest son, uh, yesterday. So I don't remember what it was he was doing, but he, he said, he came to it like he gave up really fast. He said, I can't do it. And I walked over and I was like, HUD, I don't ever want to hear that again. I'm like, what you could say is you come up to me and say, dad, I haven't been able to figure this out. Can you help me? But I'm like, I don't want to hear you say, I can't do it because it said, you already have just taken yourself out of the game. Mm -hmm. You just, your mentality just totally was like, yep, I gave up. I'm done. And so it was funny because like he kind of sat there for a minute and he's like, all right, I'm going to try again. And after a couple few minutes, he got it. And so yeah. I'm like, see, exactly. You can't tell yourself that you can't do it. Dude, and we, I, you, you know me, I, speech matters. Yeah. Your words matter. I'm always saying to you and others like, <laughs> you know, uh, say exactly what you're, what you mean. Yeah. Like be as descriptive and articulate as you can. And sometimes you're just fumbling around because you're trying to you're trying to figure out the idea. You don't quite know it. Yep. And that's part of the process. But when you say I can't, that's not actually what you mean. It's usually I could, but I don't want to. Right. I could, but you know, you know, whatever. And but you keep telling yourself you can't, and then that gives you the freedom to to quit right and that's something that is that'll that that ruins your uh your your success so you've got to how you talk the words you use how you describe things it really matters and we were talking about this before <clears throat> you know i remember i had cam haynes on the podcast and years ago and he said uh he was talking about running the boston marathon and he was in the race and he was running right there with lance armstrong yeah and uh he had got caught up to lance and he was like right there running with lance and he felt like he was done and he was i think he was not halfway through the race something like that and he's like well let's just stick with with lance for for a while i'll just run with lance for a few miles yeah and, and then, uh, and then I'll fall behind, you know? So, so he starts doing it and, uh, those few miles come up and 
you know, I'm paraphrasing the story, but then <clears throat> he's like, well, no, I'll just go another like three, four, five miles, whatever it is to the next, to the next spot. And then I'll, and then I'll, uh, and, you know, and then, th- then I'll back off, you know, and he gets to the next spot and he, he doesn't, he, he stays his best level best with right. Lance, you know, and they're having conversations as they, as they're doing this, the Boston marathon and, uh, you know, long story short, Cam ends up running the second half, the second half of the Boston marathon faster than the first. It's yep. like him and Lance did that. And they were like two of the only people, you know, there's been a few, but, um, and I, and I forget the details, but the point is he did, he never, he, first of all, he didn't think he could. Yeah. And he had every intention of not doing that. But all he did was kept telling himself, just go this much further, you know, with Lance and then, and then quit later. Yeah. Get to this point first and then quit later. You hear people say it all the time, like one step at a time, one foot in front of the other. Yeah. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. (laughs) One bite at a time. And I think we do that. Yeah. I do that to this day. For sure. All the time. When we talk, like, you know, when you... We talk about it all the time as we're packing these heavy loads. We get an animal down. We got to go back 10, 12, 15 miles to get back to the truck. And we're always like, it's just work. Yes. It, it's just work. That I'm going to survive. It's just work. Saying that <laughs> in my head, it's it's just work. Yep. Is powerful for me. Because, sure. you know, I, I, a guy might run a Boston Marathon, right? It's just work. <laughs> it's just physical work. Yep. You know? It'll be over when it's over. And I feel like sometimes we pay a lot of money to go to a Boston Marathon yeah, or be yeah. in something or to train for something or to get this kind of work. So to me, it's like, yeah, it, it is just work and it's not that big a deal. It's just pain. Yeah. It, it's just pain. It's just discomfort. It's just, it's it for, and it's temporary. It's temporary. I it, tell myself that all the time. You know? It's just temporary. It, it's just it's only for this moment. It's just work. It's, but it, and so it's like, just do it. Yep. And then three days from now, it'll all be over. I'll be, I'll be somewhere else. And the work will have been done. You just block out the discomfort. You yep. just, you just don't even dwell on it. It's just not even a subject worth discussing exactly. or contemplating. You're not going to quit. No. So you just do it. Nope. It's like, it's just work. And always remind myself that, you know, some men can and some men can't. <laughs> Which one true. am I going to be? It's true. Am I going to be the man that can or the man that can't? And my 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 sense of self is like, no, I'm not going to be the guy that that quits. Yeah. And that's one thing. I don't know. We as a whole, we're always pushing each other. You know, on the mountain, we're always pushing each other. Um, and I think. Same thing, you know, if you're trying to become more disciplined, there's always that opportunity to find that buddy that's going to continually push you and you push each other. So yeah. One day you might not be your best, but your buddy's right there, and, but you also don't want to lose to him and he holds you accountable. Let's go do this workout. We do it all the time with the gym or with the backpack loads. And, and, uh, I mean, I don't want to let you guys down either when we're, mm-hmm. when we're on a hunt. And I don't want to be that inhibiting factor that is, we didn't get it done because of me. Yeah, one of the things I've learned over the years is, you know, when I go, it, it is to ignore my, to ignore my emotions. Yeah. You know, yes. there's some, there's some uh, sensitive woke person out there saying, you know, that's <laughs> terrible. No, it's not. <sighs> ignore my emotions. They're, they're not really that useful. Uh, logic and uh, discipline are more more useful generally than than my emotions. Yep. And so sometimes, like, you're on a hunt, you're soaking wet. It's miserable. It's it's been terrible. You're slodging your back your way back alone to a teepee somewhere. You're a little bit lost. You're using your maps. Your battery's going dead. Right. And you're saying this sucks. Yeah. And <laughs> you're just, this? <laughs> I'm blocking out all of that. Yeah. Job to do, yep. execute. That's it. And 
there used to be a time though when I was like, I don't know, man, I might just walk this way back to the truck, forget it. I'll come back a week from now, get my stuff. Like I'm done. I just want a bath, hot water, like all these other things that would come into my mind. That that's that's not what happens now. I ignore those emotions. And one of the things that I'll often do is I'll even tell myself, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not going to discuss, think about this, Brian, right now. Uh, let's think about it tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. Not today. Tomorrow. I'll decide what I'm going to do tomorrow. Not today. Because I know when I get back to the tent, I climb in there, I get my gear up, I dry it out. I'm yep. shivering. Get a belly. Fire's going. Warm food. I get some and- food. I go to sleep. I wake up. I have a whole different attitude. Yeah. Everything's different. Make those decisions. Make decisions later. Not when you're at your worst. Make them when you're at your best. So I often do that. I, I'm like, nope, not today. I was pissed off yesterday because Mark and Ryan wanted to mess around with my podcast that I that <laughs> we published. Yep. I was I was pissed off. I'm like Brian, you know what? How about you wait till tomorrow, and then just then be you know then address it. Then it's like, all right, yeah, because today I'm I'm mad. Mm-hmm. That has served me quite well to just to just take a minute yep. and decide on something later one day two days or three days later now i think it's foolish to kick the can down the road you can measure your success in life by the number of uncomfortable conversations you're willing to have Mm -hmm. and i think that that is something that that uh you want to balance right postpone decisions until you're in a better space but not so long that you're neglecting well, things and, that need to be and addressed. I've been really working on this for myself is like, you know, six months ago, a year ago, I found myself really, if like my kids did something, I would snap and I couldn't figure out what the heck was going on, like why it was happening to me, you know? And so I told myself, okay, every time the kids do something or say something, um, take five seconds. Yeah. Stop, take five seconds. Now I have noticed a dramatic change in that where I'm like, they don't see me snapping when it comes to that conversation or, or whatever they may do or a conversation with my wife. Um, cause I, I don't know why, but I was having a big issue with that. And as of late, it's definitely much better. To take a minute. You think about it. Um, say you're having an argument. I'll go away for 10 minutes and then I come back and address the situation. And it's a totally different conversation and a different outcome for the mm-hmm. better 99% of the time. And so it's, it's, it hasn't been easy, but it, it's definitely been more beneficial and yep. for the better. Yeah. I, I think whenever you're engaged, whether it's physical or mental, whenever you're engaged in something that's really difficult and, and hard to do, hard to address, yeah, it's okay to take a minute and say, you know what? I'm going to ignore my emotions over this issue. Mm-hmm. They're not that helpful. Yeah. I'm going to put those off to the side. And then I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to rethink about all of this stuff when I, when I'm in a better spot, let's say tomorrow after a good night's rest or after I've had dinner, I used to have this issue where I'd get hangry (laughs) and my wife was like, look, there's, there's like uh, three things. Like I'm, I'm a simple, simple man. Like if, okay, if I'm, if I'm hungry, I'm an ass. If I haven't had sex, I'm an ass. If if I'm if I haven't had enough sleep, I'm an ass. Like there's three. Yeah. It's like like I'm a, I'm I'm such a product. I would, or used to be. I would throw in there before it used to be. If you didn't have caffeine, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's definitely a a a you know, <laughs> um, a situation where if if mm-hmm. if the uh, basic sort of needs are needs met. aren't met, yeah you you you're you're not at your best right and so being able to you know she would she would like be like oh brother you're acting like a child and it's simply because i'm hungry that's it 
That's it. Uh, and uh, so being able to set to sort of go, hey, Brian, you're you're losing your temper, but you know why? It's because you're hungry. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the situation yeah, right yeah. now. Nothing to do with you can't find a dish in the sink or all the dishes I should say are in the sink and you can't find a spatula and you want to cook some eggs. Like those are really not monumental mountains of, yeah. it's that you're hungry. Yep. And then being able to go, you know what? Ignore your emotions. F your feelings mm-hmm. as uh, Ryan Muncie says. Yep. And I think that has been huge. And so anyway, when it comes to this whole idea on mental toughness, discipline, becoming a better version of you, right? Like executing on your why. I think how you talk to yourself matters, you know, paying attention to that. Yep. Um, I understanding your reasons for what you're doing, anchoring yourself to those. They all provide, uh, you know, the structure you need to continue to. Yeah, and again, I think it starts from, you know, years prior. Like, so when you start right now, mm-hmm. five years, you're going to be a totally different person than you were if you didn't yeah, start and, doing those small winning, discipline and, wins right now. And one of the things that helps so, so much, human beings are social mm-hmm. beings. We're social beings. We're, we're, we're community driven. Being able to, um, being able to to get a a a brotherhood together, yeah, you know, where you can tackle some shared goals together, can help you when you're feeling too weak to do it on your own. Yeah, you know, surround yourself by people that push you, that make you be better, that um that don't pull you down, drag you down. Uh, you become like the people you hang out with the most. Yeah. I truly believe that. I truly believe that there's, I think it's that, you know, you become a, uh, I don't know the right word. You become a, a prospect of the five people you hang out with the most. Yeah. And I truly believe that. So if, if, if you can like, um, surround yourself with the right people, mm-hmm. get yourself, I mean, I found a lot of that brotherhood at CrossFit gym. I found it at church. I found it in business, at work, where I could surround myself with people that I forged strong relationships with. And then in turn, they pushed me to be better and I pushed them to be better. Yeah. And together they pulled me up when I wasn't doing great. Yep. And uh, and then I did the same for them when I was in a stronger position. Yeah, I think that's that's... To me, you're describing a marriage, you know, really yeah. like when you're not at your best, your wife is there helping you and vice she versa. keeps you from murdering the children. <laughs> Whooping some ass more so than you probably should. <laughs> no, <laughs> I think that's good. Some of, the, some of that discipline's good too. <laughs> yeah. But to an extent. Anyway, I think uh, we're going to wrap up this podcast it's getting dark out here on our yeah. road. We're almost a Boise. Uh, folks, if you like the show and you want to support us consider uh going to go hunt if you need some gear check out their gear shop and use the code gritty over there and uh you save get you points in the shop as well and uh they've been a great partner with us so check them out and the other one is stealthy hunter uh check out stealthy hunter they got all the supplements the cbd gummies and so on all that kind of stuff Got the rifle covers glassing pads and ryan and hillary are working on more stuff all the time right they've added a lot of new uh, products to their uh, to their business, and they're all good stuff. So just head on over there and look, see if there are things there that uh, would help you with your health, wellness, or your gear for the outdoors. And use the code Gritty over there, and we really appreciate it when you do. Helps us uh, keep doing the show. Thanks again for tuning in. Catch you on the next episode. Stay gritty. <laughs>